Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you for a congregation of people that love each other and love you. Yeah. And Lord, we just give you praise. Speak to us, inspire us, challenge us. Do it all today yes. in our hearts. Lord, we don't want to be the same. No. We want to love you more. We want to be more on fire. We want to be more equipped. So we open our hearts. We open our minds to receive from you today. In Jesus' name, and everybody say, to men, but to God, for no one understands him, but he utters mysteries in the Spirit. Okay, so they receive that the Holy Spirit is guiding that, right? I got a lot of scriptures today, so if you're taking notes, make sure that pen is good or that pencil is sharp and write it down. And we were starting to put I all of our it. notes on the app. Yeah. So we're going to start doing that, but we get a, with the hurricane, we got kind of this draft. Yeah. Yeah. But we'll start doing that again and put everything in there where you can review it. But anyway, I got a lot of scriptures today. You know why? It's because I like the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. And the Bible yeah. is really what has to speak, not the guy, right? Yeah. I want the Bible to speak. So there's so much in the Bible, so many scriptures I left on the 
cutting room floor today is hard because I'm like, oh, that's a good one, that's a good one, that's a good one. But anyway, so I got a lot of verses for us today, a lot of passages. So another one is in uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. That's the one I referenced a second ago. The Holy Spirit was guiding what they said. So it is true that praying in the Spirit is the perfect prayer, right? So I only said that other verse just was, you know, a little bit of a stretch at the different form of praying in the Spirit that is also a perfect prayer, right? So what can happen sometimes is when we start to use, when our minds get involved, sometimes we can mess things up a little bit. Mm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You ever have somebody praying for you and you're like, oh, that's good. And then go, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. You're like, they're doing pretty good. They got a little bit of mixture in there. Uh, even like with, with prophecies, mm -hmm. sometimes someone can have or hear a word from the Lord, but then it comes through with a little bit of mixture. Like Agabus, remember when Paul was going back to Jerusalem, and he's he's ready to go there, and he's like, I'm ready to suffer for the Lord, and they give him these prophecies. He's like, well, he takes his his belt and he ties it up. He's like, the person who owns this is going to get tied up and arrested and thrown in prison, and they're like all prophesying this over him, and they're saying, don't go to Jerusalem. Now their the Acts it says their prophecies were true. They were prophecies from the Spirit. But their conclusion about it was incorrect. Mm -hmm. And if we didn't have the rest of the book of Acts, we would see where Paul has an angel on two occasions speak to him and says, you need to go before Caesar. So if we didn't have that, we would think, I think Paul missed it. Right. I think Paul made a mistake. And some people still even argue that, but I don't see how they have any case for that because <laughs> later we see the Holy Spirit, the angels, God speaking through the angels saying, this is part of the plan. It was just a difficult plan. So sometimes we can we can mess things up when we when we have our own mind involved. That's why it's always so important to just continually yield to the Holy Spirit. That's why praying in the Spirit is so powerful because it bypasses whatever our preferences are. Like my preference is always not suffering. <laughs> God does not have that same preference for me. <laughs> right? But he always has way better outcomes than what I would have, right? And so we, we, we can line up with his his perfect his perfect will, his perfect prayer. And uh, so what is so we know like the perfect prayer in, in the spirit, but like what is it in English? Like what is the perfect prayer? Well, the Lord's prayer, right? Well, well that, yeah, but what part of that is is the perfect part? What part of that is like the best part, right? I mean, there's some good ones, like, right? That, that will be done. That's really good. Listen, there's a lot, there's a lot of good parts, right? But like, what's the best? What's the best part? Oh, I'm gonna make a case for one this morning. I mean, praying for revival is really good, right? Yeah. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his right. I mean, that's right there. That's right at the top, right? That's pretty good. But is there really a way to know? Like, Because we've kind of already established praying in the Spirit is, that's God's perfect prayer, right? So there's no way to know what's being said. Wait a minute, is there? There is. Go ahead. Because it was understood a couple times. Acts chapter 2, verse 4. And they were all filled with the Spirit, as the Spirit gave them utterance. They spoke in tongues. Now they were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews and devout men from every nation. Sorry, I jumped in. I skipped my spot here. Devout men from every nation under heaven. And at the sound, the multitudes came together, and they were bewildered, because each one heard, hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished. Are these not all Galileans? These people speaking, are they not all Galileans? <laughs> And, and how is it that we hear each of each of us in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Perga, Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, everybody. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. Amen. Whoa. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I 
think Rick knew it already. I saw him whispering to his wife. He's really <laughs> pleased. So I think he might have guessed it already. The mighty works of God, declaring the mighty works of God. The part, wait, that's just one scripture, though. Right? Let's see if there's another one. I'm having trouble with that. <laughs> <laughs> Help me. All right, here we go. There. So maybe let's go to another one. Acts chapter 10, verse 44. While Peter was still saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word, and the believers from among the circumcised who had come with Peter were amazed because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out on even the Gentiles. For they were hearing them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter declared, Can anyone withhold water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? I love that. I love just this. baptize them right now. <laughs> no class. You declare Jesus, let's baptize you and tell you to walk in the faith and pursue Jesus. This is something powerful about that. But extol, extol, it just means, it means to declare, to make great, to magnify. It's giving glory to God. Well, that's my two verses. All right, I got one more for you. If you're going to be hard like that, I'll get you one more. <laughs> got one more. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, starting in verse 14. For if I pray in the tongue, my spirit always, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. What am I to do? I will pray with my spirit. I will pray with my mind also. So it's both good, both good, right? I will sing praise with my spirit, and I will sing with my mind also. He's saying right there, at least the singing portion, he's saying singing in tongues is praise. Wow. Amen. Amen. And I know someone's thinking, well, I thought when I prayed in tongues, I was praying for all the orphans in China. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm sure, like, yeah, like, I don't, I'm not saying that it's limited to just that. Like, it's, the, it's whatever the Holy Spirit wants to say. It's whatever the, you know, it talks about he's making intercession for us. So, yeah, the Holy Spirit can pray through us all sorts of amazing and wonderful things. Yes, absolutely. But definitely what we know, the one thing he's definitely doing is praising. Amen. Amen. He is praising the Father. He is giving glory to God. Yes, he Lord. is thanking Him. Amen. Amen. That is for sure. See, praise is the perfect prayer. Amen. Yes. Praise and thanksgiving, they go, they go hand in hand. So they enter into His courts, enter into His gates with thanksgiving, and into His courts with praise. Yes, Lord. That is the entryway into the presence of God. That's why if you ever notice when I pray, like if someone says, hey, can you pray for me? I don't know if you ever notice this, but I always start with, thank you for. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I'm always yes. like, Lord, thank you for so-and-so. Thank, thank you for your heart to serve. Or thank you for all that you're doing. Thank you, Lord. I just give praise to God. Usually for something related to that person um, or just something God has done, you know, in their life or just how God uses them or anything like that. But because that is the entryway into the presence of God. Amen. I'm looking forward. How many looking forward to Thanksgiving? Amen. Ready to get ready? Some of you making room? Making room? Amen. It's going to be great. We got some good food. Next week's going to be great. We got some good food. How many of you? I mean, one thing about Gateway is we got some cooking mamas and papas in this place. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, yeah. like, you put us on a contest with any other church, man, I think we got it. <laughs> like, we got the, yeah. you know, the potluck. There ain't no luck involved. It's pot shirt. Yeah. <laughs> pot shirt thing. Right? <laughs> Come on, be proud, dude. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. right. That's why it's going to be good. The food is going to be great. But you know what's going to be great, too? The testimonies. The testimonies. Yes. Just hearing people testify. Just getting together and sharing what God has done. I had one yes, wonderful lady in the church. She's like, hey, can I, you know, God did this, and I'm so grateful, you know, and I want to share. I go, can you stay? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. No, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. It's going to share during that brunch. Because it's, it's so great to give thanks. Yes. It's so great to give glory to God. 
It's vital. Like, there's no faith without it. In Jesus, there's no following in Jesus without it. Amen. You know, I heard somebody say, um, you know, we, and it's been preached, you've probably heard it preached, you know, we, we thank God for what he's done and we praise him for who he is. How many have ever heard that? You ever heard that? A sermon? You're like, afraid to raise your hand, right? Like, what is he going to say? He's going to ruin that too? <laughs> Not ruin it, just dent it a little. Um, and I think there's some real truth to that. It preaches good. It preaches good. But really, there's so much overlap between the two. You know, uh, I mean, Psalm 145 says, Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. I mean, there's so much to God on this side of eternity that we just won't know. Like this, on the other side, there is just so much we're going to discover. You know, Richard right now is walking with Jesus, and he's like, Whoa, I didn't know that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Be, I don't care if you're like, you know, as old as Dave Burroughs. <laughs> you can still, you can still learn. I can say it because he looks young. You better look at Dave Burroughs like that. You realize he is 99. And so his shoes older than that. <laughs> There's so much of God that we can know and discover on this side, too. On this side of eternity. We can still learn to look, whoa, and praise Him for it. And I, and I would make an argument that we can't really separate God from His deeds. You know, like praise Him for who He is. And, you know, I, I, I don't know how we can separate Him from, from what He does. Right? Because it's, like, it's like my wife. Like my wife Joanna, she is she is my wife. You know why? Because she married me. <laughs> and, when, and that was like 30 years ago. And so she's my wife because she stayed married to me. <laughs> you know, one of the things I love about Joanna is she laughs at all my jokes. <laughs> she's really good. And, and you know, I can imitate her laugh too. Like I'll say a joke and this is what she, she's like. <sighs> <laughs> She's also mom. She's not just my wife. She's also mom because she raised those kids. She birthed those kids. Amen. You know? And, and there's, there's people that, like, sometimes you're mom to somebody that you didn't even birth because Amen. you gave that to them. Yes. You know? yes, Lord. And so, so much of God's identity, it's, it is revealed in, in, in how he is, how he behaves, what he does. And we give him, so as we're giving praise for who God is, it's, it's just it's recognition of what he's done. Right? Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. And, and he's revealed by that. Like, we even see it in his names. A lot of his names, like El Shaddai, you know, the all-sufficient one. He has it all, everything that we need. Or Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. Yes, that's, that's an action. That, his yes. name is based out of an action. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. That's an action. Yes. Amen? Amen? Isaiah 12, verse 4, it says, And you will say in that day, give thanks to the Lord, <coughs> call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples, proclaim his name is exalted. Sing praise to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Yes, Let this be made yes. known to the earth. He's saying praise him because of the great glorious things that he's done. Yes. Amen? Amen. So it's like, yeah, who he is, but also what he's done. Isaiah 25, 1 says, O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things. Plans formed old, faithful, and sure. E even Jesus said, all right, hold on one second. This is driving me crazy, and it's a short drive. I won't lie. Amen. Amen. <laughs> 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 just teasing. He said, shut up in church. I was just kidding. 
God bless your heart. If he's only in the south, as long as you say, God bless your heart after <laughs> It's uh, he was saying anything, right? God bless their heart. Yes. <laughs> Preaching on forgiveness next week. Um, even Jesus said it. Jesus said it in John chapter 10, verse 37. If I am not doing the works of my Father, then do not believe me. But if I do them, even though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know and understand that the Father is in me and that I am in the Father. He's saying the proof is in the pudding. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I, he, I am who I am because of what you see me do. Amen. Amen. That's why, like, you know, sometimes I, I just introduce myself as John a lot of times. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I'm Pastor John. I'm Pastor John. But I, really what matters is if I act like a pastor. Right. Yeah. If I pray for the people, if I care for the people, if I try to give God's will for the body, you know, that's what matters. Amen? Amen. So praise is, is so powerful. It is the perfect prayer. It works in every situation. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. It encourages us. Psalm 42, 11 says, Why are you cast down, O oh my soul? Why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. It brings his presence. It says he inhabits the praises of his people. Amen. You know, it's just like when we're we're in here and you come in here and and you kind of like, oh, you ever come to church and be like, oh, I didn't want to come, but I also didn't want to get calls, so I should. <laughs> But you come in here and we start to praise, and we had like great praise and worship this morning. Mm -hmm. Amen. We had great praise, and it was, and, and, and it starts to, you know, the presence of God and habits. I imagine in my mind, like, like the sky, and, and like almost like the clouds forming into a throne when we're praising Him, and God just comes and sits down and get like, there you go, He just made a place for me. <laughs> and He says He's enthroned on the praises of, our, of, of the people. Yes. You know, He inhabits our praises. And, and it builds faith. In Jude chapter 1, verse 20, it says, But you, beloved, building up yourselves in the most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit. See, praying in the Spirit is the same. It's that perfect prayer. It's that perfect prayer before the Lord of praise before Him. So that's why, like, sometimes I just get to pray in the Spirit. Sometimes I can go right into praise and sing songs and stuff, but I, I'll be honest with you, sometimes <clears throat> without that Holy Spirit, like, sometimes it's hard to jump right into even praise by myself, you know? Amen. That's why sometimes the corporate praise is good, because you got people coming together and they're praising God together, right? They're praising Amen. God, and like, you're not there yet. But that stream is going by and finally you, like, jump in and finally you just kind of start to flow with it. And you experience it. Praying in the spirits. Now, if you're going to pray in the spirit, like sometimes, like, like yesterday, I was like, I was feeling kind of down. I knew what I was moving on. I was like, oh, Lord. I don't think this is going to work. And I'm going to have to come up with a whole other sermon. <laughs> I, I just, that's what I was thinking. I was like, I'm just feeling pretty down. You know, sometimes you know you, you like that. Everybody, right? I'm being honest. Yeah. Right? I'm being honest. And I was like, Oof. and I tried to sing, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> working. And because I'm kind of like, you know, I, was too, I didn't want to come up with another sermon. Praying spirit. Praying spirit. I can feel the presence of the Lord. And I'll tell you, I mean, it, it doesn't happen in like 30 seconds usually. I mean, sometimes. Sometimes it takes long. And you get a, you get a fight. And you get a push. And you get a, the, the, the garment of praise. It's like a weapon. Yeah. We put that on and just start praising. I and mean, I started just praying in the spirit. And I had to get me ready to get do stuff so I could sing and praise and with my with my song and praise him and worship and just give that to him and, and then like it took a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sometimes you gotta do it. And you, it's called pressing in. That's right. Old school. 
like press in, baby, press in. Yeah. You know, this little like you know five minute thing. That I don't know, man. I'm not sure that ever works. Really. It only seems like it works when nothing's going bad. <laughs> and you got to get that victory, man. You got to press in. Now, a little word of advice. You know, if you're driving on your way to work and you're like praying in tongues, like, be careful. You know, you might meet your neighbor at a traffic light. <laughs> Good thing is, you know, Kevin, like, yeah, I, we can work it out. But I mean, he looked at me and I was like, hey. <laughs> he just was like, what the what? <laughs> So just think about that. Get the tinted windows or something, you know, <laughs> or pray at home. But uh, you know, press in and we and we get that victory. And you know what? Because it breaks chains. Amen. And that was going on and on. Paul and Silas in the prison, and they're praising and they're praying and they're worshiping and they're just the chains. The earthquake happens and the chains fall off. Yes. It's powerful. I wonder, it doesn't say it, so let's be clear. It says they were praying. So, but it doesn't say if they were praying in English or praying in the spirit. Amen. I can't imagine them like not praying in the spirit. Like if you're in prison, like if you're spirit filled, you know, you're gonna break it out, right? I would. So I wonder. Praying in the spirit and then begin to sing. Mm, maybe. Maybe. See, it's powerful, and it frees others. It frees other people. Psalm 40, verse 3. You put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in God. Amen. Let me tell you, let me tell you. And we, we saw it with the Philippian jailer right there. They're praising God in the midst of the worst day ever. And they're like, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You're so worthy. Hallelujah. Then, boy, you have the earthquake and the change. And you're like, what? Amen. See, when people see Christians that can, from their heart, genuinely praise the Lord through any kind of crazy, nutso situation, they're like, that's different. That's not, that's not television. Television is Christian. Yeah, praise the Lord. You can praise the Lord for that. That's what I want. Yeah, man. Yes, Lord. That's what you want. Yeah. That's what this church is and will be more. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Grab it. Yeah. Make that yours. Because it frees other people. Because other people see it and they're just like, that's real. I'm telling you, like, with stuff going on in this world and society and everything that's going on, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what the lost are looking for. They're looking for something genuine. Yeah. 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 Because there is so much fake out there. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. There is a resurgence of things of the spirit. People looking for things of the spirit. They want something beyond what is natural. Yes. Because they, you know, there was a season when there was like a rejection of it, you know, over the past decades. I remember once preaching a sermon on, on gifts of the spirit, and I had them like, I, and I was thinking like, because growing up there was like a rejection of like tongues and supernatural things by you know a lot of big denominations, but and then like, but then I was preaching on it, and like a lot of people just like never even heard of it. They're like, oh, I don't, I don't know what that is. They didn't have a predisposed dislike for it, and now I think it's, I feel like it's coming back around where people are like, you know what? I mean, even Baptists. Like, you could be a Baptist missionary and speak in tongues now. That's a lot. That used to be like they throw you out. Hallelujah. Like, something going on. Amen. Something going on. And so as we praise Him, though, it brings people with us. Now, I'll say this. If, if praise is the perfect prayer, what does that make complaining? <laughs> That's scary. Like, think about it for a minute. Like, if it's praise, because I think I made a pretty good argument. <clears throat> praise is in the top three praying things we can do. Maybe yeah. the top one. Yeah. Like, just praising God, giving glory to God. I mean, I'm just saying, if that's the number one, the opposite, what is that? Yeah. I mean, I can't even 
even decide what to write the answer for that. Like, I, I wrote down all these different things, but I don't even know. It's like, state worshipers. I mean, what is that? Like, it's, it's like saying, God, I don't believe you. God, I don't trust you. Oh, my goodness. God, you are not faithful. God, you're not a redeemer. That's what that is. But instead, we say, no, no. God, I've not seen the righteous forsaken, but the seed begging for bread. Lord, I believe your word. Lord, I believe you're the great redeemer. I believe you're going to redeem the storms. I believe you're going to redeem every situation. I believe you're going to take it.
but full of your spirit. The fruit of your spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, the kind of good and gentleness, meekness, self control. Make it done. Lord, may we be full of your spirit. Full of faith. Full of joy. Full of praise. Praise. Thank you for reaching our neighbors. Thank you for all the 